Hi everyone, I'm practicing Liszt La Campanella today. This is a piece I've been playing for a long time, and I thought I would share some tips and tricks for how to play this very virtuosic piece of music. It is definitely a piece for advanced students, and as with any etudes by Chopin or Liszt, it will really take many years until you get comfortable playing it. Trust me, I go back to La Campanella every once in a while and it is still difficult. There are so many leaps all over the keyboard, fast repeated notes, octaves, trills with four and five, Liszt was a virtuoso pianist and composer who did not hold back in taking full advantage of the sounds that this instrument can make. La Campanella is a piece that reveals technical capabilities of the pianist, and it can sound as impressive as it is difficult. Practice it diligently, but also keep in mind that you have to understand how your body works in order to make it playable. Just forcing things can lead to frustration and often injury. So let me give you a few ideas for how to approach the most difficult spots in this piece. Let's go back to the beginning. Think of the horizontal line rather than focusing on getting every single note right. With practice, you will develop physical memory and your pinky will naturally find the high D sharp. So unload yourself of the mental burden of getting every single note right. If you focus your attention on every note, it will sound very laborious and heavy. What we want is the bell-like sound quality. So instead, think about shaping the line with the melodic notes. There is an imaginary arch I'm drawing with my wrist, and this helps my pinky stay lighter. The same idea applies here. Be sure to think of the melodic line. There are some grace notes which you have to play with very focused fingers. As you know, the piece is somewhat of a variation and the same melody gets more and more elaborate with more and more notes. As it gets more involved, you have to remember to keep the line alive. Prioritizing shapes and lines over notes will make you sound more fluent and musical. So remember this as you practice the more difficult variations as well. Did you see how I divided the line between the two hands? That's not how it's written, but it sounds better this way since I have more control over the fingers I'm using, which leads to a more bell-like quality of every note. So my second tip is rewrite. Rewrite the music so that it fits your hands better or to make it easier. Left hand's thumb plays the right hand's bottom note. I'll show you the music. The highlighted note is taken with my left hand, but I have to be sure to voice it quite strongly since it is a melodic note. And when you rewrite like this, you don't have to play the ornaments in the right hand, the 32nd notes, with the fourth finger like it's written. You can play with the third finger, which would be stronger but be sure to give it an accent at the beginning of those ornaments to make it really snappy. Here you have the top notes as the melodic notes, so your pinky has to be really strong.
So now I'm drawing an imaginary arch from the top to the bottom note, which means that the bottom notes are light and effortless. I'll show you what happens when I try to think and play every single note. the left hand has to be voiced. You'll have to think that you're playing about mezzo forte. Be sure to catch the bass notes with the pedal and play the melodic notes with a little bit of arm motion on each note. The right hand is jumping two octaves with just three fingers, but thankfully they're playing the same D sharps. Here it helps to focus on your third finger. Think of it as a center, kind of an anchor, and your thumb and pinky should learn the distance from your third finger. If you lose the center, you will likely miss the notes. So practice and play with your eyes on the center and use your periphery vision to play the other notes. These repeated notes are actually not that hard to play. If you really curve your second finger and get out of the way instantaneously for your thumb to play. I'm showing you how I take the low D sharp with my left hand to give my right hand a break. I said this several times, but it is especially important here to focus on the main notes rather than getting stuck trying to think of all three notes. Even when you're practicing it slowly, the filigree notes need to be played with lightness. Practice playing it fast and light. Again, my left hand is helping out the right hand by taking the F sharp. To play these repeated notes, your fingers have to curl in very quickly, getting out of its way for the next finger to play. And be sure to pedal it. It is true with almost any piano, repeated notes speak much better with the pedal down. This part sounds like Christmas bells. They're all in the high register, so don't worry about voicing it too much. But I am using my wrist in the right hand, quickly tilting it side to side to make the trill easier. voice the top while trilling with your thumb and the second finger. Lift your wrist a little high. It will make your thumb stay lighter for the trill. With these chromatic scales, your fingers need to be very curved in to play fast. 
Playing these chromatic scales is kind of tiring for my arm, so I snap at the top note while I give it an accent, and this gives a bit of a break for my lower arm. You don't have to trill with two hands here, but you definitely have more power. If you do use two hands, decide when you will switch to one hand trill and then to fourth and fifth finger trill and practice its timing. Otherwise, the transitions will be very obvious and awkward. This is an especially difficult section where you have to trill with your weakest fingers. But the thumb playing every eighth note actually makes the, everything easier. Have a drop motion where the thumb plays and it'll help you ease the tension on your right arm. Somewhere around here, I feel like my arms will fall off. But thankfully, I have opportunities to relax a bit. Have a bit of throwing motion here, or you can think of it as dropping your arm into the key. It doesn't unload much, but it definitely helps. Here, this is where you can relax, for a half a bar. You have to consciously make an effort to relax your right arm, because more hard stuff is coming. Here, whenever your thumb plays, use your arm. Have a drop motion on every melodic note. And take every opportunity for the left hand to take right hand's notes, like I'm doing here. It's not hard to figure out how you want to divide the notes between the two hands here, but think really light fingers and make sure that you're not making the hand crossings really obvious. This is where everything just gets really hard. The last four pages build up to the climax and there are all sorts of difficulties with jumps, octaves, and chords. This is an effective way of practicing jumps. You're playing it in a slow tempo, but your hands are moving very, very quickly, as quickly as possible. The second part of this practicing is making sure that your fingers are at the right place before you play the notes. But also know where your center is. With each two bar phrase, the center moves up a little. Be aware of the shift because your arms and even your body may have to adjust slightly. Your wrist has to adjust, as you can see mine, to allow the short thumb to play the black key. 
And this is very obvious when you stop and think about it. But often, you just play and play until you get it. That's the long and hard way of doing things. As always, figuring out what exactly is making you miss notes or making things difficult should be the first step of solving problems. I've been completely ignoring the left hand, but there are jumps in the left hand too. The right hand needs to be aware of where exactly it takes more time for the left hand to get to the right note. Just this awareness and a smidgen of consideration of the right hand will help them play together in the right notes. Here, as you come down in octaves, you want to stay inside of the keyboard so that your thumb can quickly go back and forth between the black and white keys. When your hands are on the outer edge of the keyboard, your short thumb will have to move quite a bit to reach the black keys, and that definitely does not help you play fast octaves. great octaves, it is a challenge for me to play octaves loud and fast. So I have to make sure my left hand is giving enough volume by playing full bass with heavy and loose arm, but really strong fingers. I can't play every chord loudly, but giving it a direction by making a crescendo to the 3rd and 6th 8th note can create the illusion of more power. You can see that all throughout this section, my arms are staying relaxed. In order to make it through the end and build up the intensity, your arms need to let go of any tension it builds. Use quick dropping motion, like here. Your wrist has to be relaxed also because a part of the speed comes from the wrist motion as well as your arms. And when your hands are all over the keyboard like this, your entire body must feel centered. Your core including your belly and your butt have to feel grounded so that your arms can move around quickly and freely. Check your shoulders to see if they're holding any tension. Bring your shoulders down to relax your arms. I know this is not a concept that can be taught online, but just know that you will not play fast with your shoulders up. I know some of these ideas about the technical aspect of playing La Campanella can't really be conveyed clearly in an online format like this, but hopefully there were some good takeaways for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Good luck and see you in the next video. Thank you.